Raise your hand if you ever wanted to be the very best like no one ever was. Any of you with your hands left down, you're lying. See, even Buddy's got his hand up. Posers. What is up everybody, Full Prima Power Patrick, your mom's favorite power lifter, and probably your biological daddy here. We've got a bench day going on. Buddy's making loud noises. And we've got our breakfast going on. We've got the bowl. The bowl is full of three eggs, 181 grams of 93.7 beef, and some ketchup to make me not want to blow my brains out. Post eating walk is a necessity, especially in the morning. You get all those fats and proteins in your system. You want your nutrient delivery system, your blood flow, bloodstream, to uh, incorporate it into your body. Best way to do that is to wake everything up, get the blood flowing, and that's with a morning walk. And if you're lucky, you got a little poppy. What's up, bud? He's mad because we're trying a new leash aggression training and he's not liking it because he's not able to jump around and be a maniac. But, so, <clears throat> you'll be the greatest or the very best like no one ever was. Pokemon, right? But of the Pokemon games, which one is the best? And I, I got some I got some opinions on it based on psych psychology. It's all based on what your goals are. And Pokemon is one of those where it's it's a progression fantasy game. And to be honest, it's easy. The main game of Pokemon, really easy. Because they wanted it to be catered towards Western audiences. And uh, so they made it easier. If you've played any other JRPG, you know that is extremely difficult. Like, how many hours have you guys spent? I mean, uh, on Fire Emblem, like the, uh, what was it? The uh, Flaming Sword, the first one that came Western. The hard mode was easy mode in Japan for, for reference. So, which Pokemon game is your favorite? And it's, it's a lot of people's favorite. Like, the, 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 the series as a whole is a lot of people's favorite because it's easy. It's easy to get into. The barrier to entry is very low, but it's got a very high ceiling. Everyone thinks they're good because they beat the Elite Four multiple times. But you get into competitive, can't even take down another person's Pokemon. And it's a lot of strategy. Trust me. I thought I was good. Then I invited Shane Haller to the uh, very first 2300 talk. And uh, I was like, we're going to play Pokemon uh, to finish this up. And uh, he bopped me seven games in a row. I think I took one of his Pokemon down and wasn't even close. But he said, good boy. Yep. So I think a lot of people, if, if you are someone who is all about the behind the curtain things what's going on behind the curtain chances are you've gone into speed running speed runners love the first generation of pokemon because once you figure out what is going on behind the curtain because you can absolutely access every single bit of code while playing the main game without a game shark you it's it's like a playground because it was written in uh, Access, I believe, which is, no, that's, that's Microsoft Access. Um, pretty much a program designed to make calculators. And that's how they programmed it. So if you look at the um, world records for Pokemon and speedrunning, the, the first generation, you can see a lot of the skips are super cool. Like, um, you can skip the entire rocket facility, Sylphco, with the usage of a polka doll at the uh, Lavender Town Tower, the Pokemon Tower. And it's things like that, where it's like, it is so broken that it's fun. Almost like the Ghost Stories dub, uh, the anime dub of Ghost Stories, where the show sucked. 
it just sucked. The plot sucked. And the dubbers, the uh, voice actors, were given no supervision. So they're making midget jokes all over the place. They're, they're like, I'm too young to get... I I'm too young to get haunted. I'm, I can't even vote, so I can't even be a Republican. Stuff like that. So, first Pokemon game is... It was monumental for the time. But as it ages, it ages like a fine wine. But instead of getting wine, you get malt liquor. So it's like, whoa, wasn't expecting that. But I think I kind of like this. And then going forward, if you look at what you can do in the game, a lot of people, if they're not into speedrunning, they prefer Gen 2, Johto region, because you've got that nostalgia factor of Gen 1 and you can just sweep through it. <laughs> going forward, Pokemon tried to restart basically revamp its entire image after Gen 2 with Gen 3, which is why up until pretty far into Gen 3, there were no Pokemon from the pre previous games. And they were trying to be, hey, this is almost like a whole new thing, technically still Pokemon, but <clears throat> it's all different now. So, and then that's when they introduced a lot of the super high level competitive things like Natures, I, now IVs and EVs have been around the whole time, I believe. But things like natures and and uh, uh, abilities and stuff like that. And then things got really. Oh, it's starting to rain. This is bad. Things got interesting, and uh, they kind of expanded on that. And now all the new games have a new gimmick. But it seems like every time there's a new game, they get rid of the previous gimmick. So it's like Mega Evolutions were super cool. But now it's, hopefully it comes back, but now it's almost like stale and not used and, you know. So, which Pokemon game is your favorite? I, my personal favorite, because I was into speedrunning before I graduated college, I used to speedrun Pokemon Yellow, or rather I was learning the route to speedrun Pokemon Yellow, and I was on a pretty good pace. Uh, in my first run through, and then life got in the way. Um, so I had to suspend that. But um, I used to speed run Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, Hero Story, and I got, it was like a 102, one hour, two second. I was like, oh, just, and it's always those Knuckles levels. So which Pokemon game is your favorite? And let me know in the comments. And not just which one, why is it your favorite? Because we all love Pokemon. We're all in this strength pursuit for progression. And, you know, games like that where you start off low, early, weak, and then you become like a overpowered superhuman with your super cool team and you progress. That's what appeals to us, I believe, on a psychological level. That we, we love progression and we're attracted to it. Which is why we're into the, the pursuit of strength and uh, all that jazz. So, um, which Pokemon game and why? Let me know. So if you've been following along for a little bit, my life has been a little hectic, for lack of a better term. And um, when things hit the fan, censoring it for you, YouTube. Algorithm, homie. Um, it's really important to keep yourself accountable. And I have not been good at that. And I need to work on my accountability. And the way that I'm going to go about keeping myself accountable is probably the best way that you can go about keeping yourself accountable. I've been trying to use these videos where I'm talking about things and really discussing the way that things are going for me and how I'm feeling. And it's coming off more of just whining. Uh, and I personally would not watch videos like that. So why would I um, produce videos like that? And yeah, so... What we're doing is we're going to keep ourselves accountable through journaling. And journaling, oh, sounds super gay, but there's a difference between journaling and keeping a diary. And a diary is, is very feminine and, and stuff, where a journal keeps you, it, you basically write down your goals, the steps you're going to take towards getting it, and like 
everything that you need to do and keep those steps accountable for what you need to do. And it's good to keep a calendar as well in conjunction with your journal. My calendar is actually uh, downstairs in my sleeping area. And uh, this is actually the uh, the room that I'm trying to convert into my office space area. And right now it's just full of junk, but um, I've got a desk and there's like shelves and stuff. And uh, right through that door is where my, well, let me actually show you. Oh shoot. I need to clean that up. This is my uh, recording studio, and I, I don't have my recording laptop there because it's actually right there, and uh, that's what I use to, to to program my clients. Because up until this point, I haven't had a super comfortable, a super nice space for uh, I spilled coffee for recording, and um, I actually have a desktop that I need to set up in here, and I've got these. Uh, it's it's like a gooseneck version of like a, a, a monitor display. So I'll have dual monitors and I got a, a monitor there that I got for Christmas that I never really set up. So we're going to go about and doing things a little bit more professionally. Or, I, I mean, oh, what was it? <laughs> I've, I've got one of the uh, David Coyle books on, on my um, desk right now. And that's the talent code, but from the, the culture code, one of the things, uh, oh, I'm so attractive, that he talks about is when you make things enjoyable, you make things easy, then you're more likely to stick to a plan. So having my own space and not feeling like I, I don't have a home to go to, um, that I don't have that Maslow's hierarchy of needs fulfilled, is, is going to make sure that I'm more accountable and keeping myself more in check with the things that I need to do in order to be successful. So I got to clean up the coffee that I just spilled um, and I'll get down to journaling. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. So I count myself a part of the one plate club, which means that I use one plate for all my meals, which is why I have the dog food bowl because I got annoyed with people stealing my one bowl. So we got that in order to make sure that people stopped stealing our bowl because very many people are like, oh, what's a dog food bowl? It must be disgusting. Nah, I just got that dog in me. I also implement this idea to my pens because I'm very particular about ah, getting there. The, the way I go about using my pens because when you care about things a little more than the average person, you're going to be better at it. So if you care about your results in the gym a little better, you're going to be better than everyone else. It's just a fact of life. So I historically have had bad handwriting. So I've got a pen, a singular pen, a fountain pen. Now this pen was only 10 bucks, but how many pens do you have in your household, in your office space? You can't, you, you probably can't name off the top of your head. It probably cost less than 10 bucks to get that. And how much do you care about your writing? And if you're going to do something, it, it's like going back to that, that if you make it enjoyable and it'll make it easy. Writing with a fountain pen ruins writing with any other pen. It, that's just an observation that I have found. And um, since this is my world, and you guys are all just living in the simulation along with me, it's a fact. So, get yourself a fountain pen and work on your handwriting. Because I had a, I had a co-worker um, at my last job. I wasn't technically allowed to do the job that I was doing. So, when they got the first opportunity to reprimand me, they reprimanded me to uh, oblivion and they allowed me to quit. I I requested, uh, um, uh, what was it, a raise too many times uh, for work that I was doing above my pay grade, and um, so I I didn't have access to all the servers that I was supposed to have access to, um, and I ended up having to provide a lot of handwritten notes for other people to put on the server because I didn't have access to it. Um, I did have access to it. But I just wasn't going to mention it to them because that meant more work for me. So I, I was, I did about 75% of the work at that job. And uh, when I left, they're still texting me like, hey, how do I do this? And I'm like, I don't work there anymore. So 
I, I had a coworker who was like, wow, you could, you could be a doctor with this handwriting. And I'm like, you say that like that's a compliment, but it's actually an insult and I'm taking this personally. So I developed handwriting worksheets and I developed my handwriting to be better. So I've got my notebook and um, I do have some of the handwriting uh, work that I did because I tried to like, yeah. Um, I tried to really get things going at, at the rate that um, uh, uh, I lost my um, train of thought. But we also have our food tracking for a bit here. Um, what was it? 119.24. So back in November, I had to get closer and in check with my uh, diet. And we food tracked every single day um, up to a point. Uh, a whole month of every single day writing everything down. Because I was a little off program and I had to be better on program. So we wrote everything down so that I knew. It, it's like, I'm 100%, I'm but I do that, but I do, but I do. And those buts meant you went from 100% down to 30%. Um, and then I also have some journaling in here. So I wanna continue the journaling. My last entry was um, 4.11.24. Not good, because today is 6.00. Five, I think. Ah. Six, six. So two months of no journaling, and I've been kind of spiraling downwards. So we're going to keep ourselves accountable. We've got about an hour available to journal. Might not be able to get all the journaling that we need to, but this is an important step in not a recovery process, but like a mental clarity, mental strength, and in whatever kind of process. So see you guys on the other side. All right, so journaling done for the day. I identified a lot of the habits that I am presenting myself um, to increase the stressors in my life. Uh, the top three stressors being time, work, and money. Those are all basically the same thing if you kind of peel back the foreskin on that. But we've got the, the bowl. We've got about seven ounces, 200 grams, of um, Captain Crunch and 16 ounces of Fair Life Fat-Free Milk. And I'm gonna respond to YouTube comments while I'm eating this, and then we're gonna get our pre-workout done, do our free Uber duties, and then we're gonna be at the gym. So I'll see you guys there. Prepare your snatch and down the hatch. Boys, we got, we got a, a spicy little bench day going on today. We started off the day with our uh, pre-fatigue warm-up, getting that blood flow through the system. Starting it off, I did not video that, so it's not shown. But we started off, or not started off, but the main movement of the day was the Larson Press bench press. Um, and uh, we've been doing the, these for about eight weeks at this point. So we started off with a hypertrophy block of Larson Press and we've moved on to a hyperplasia and we're getting closer and closer to 400 pounds for the Larson Presses for reps and I'm edging further and further. I literally texted my coach, I was like, homie, I didn't say homie, I said, I, I sent him the videos, I said, 385, 4x5, four 3 minutes rest. I feel like this time under 400 pounds, yeah, 400 pounds is like the longest days ever. Everything's clicking really well, and I just, I, and that that's where I ended. But I wanted to say more. Uh, but it's 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 one of those where you, you don't when when clients tell coaches how to co coach themselves, that's a red flag as a client. And I know I've got a lot of red flags as a client. But that's mostly because I am a mess of a human and my entire existence is red flags. So we got, I already said 385, four by five. It felt really easy. The first set, I, I was thrown off 
a tad bit because the bench that I was on was a little, it, it was close to a platform that the uh, um, combo rack, not combo rack, but the uh, power rack in front of me was pinned down to. They, they kind of threw a bunch of bolts in a platform and threw a power rack on it. And it's only half on there, so it does tip all the time. It doesn't tip all the way, but it's it's one of those like you're bowling and you almost got a strike, but there's that one pin that's dancing around, and it's like, nah, homie, I'm not falling, I'm not falling for you. So that's that's it, it threw me off the first rep and the the four reps that came after it. It was a little like I'm trying to keep my feet away from there because it's that's not the movement we're doing because I don't want to be bracing myself against that platform. That was the movement we were looking for. So bringing my legs up and and having those suspended, having the quad and glute activation going on there, um, different than the crossing the legs in the front like I used to do. A little bit of a different form for this Larson press going forward. Then we jumped into the incline dumbbell bench, and those those felt swifty. Those felt phenomenal. So everything going on today felt really good. We, we bumped up to the 125s, like we've been saying for the past couple weeks. And we're gonna stay there for a hot minute because it wasn't hard, but we were getting a bit of a hypoxic response coming on. Coming on. A little more, it, it's like when you know, you feel the burn and you know that you can go further. But there's also when you feel the burn and you know you can't go further. And we're, we're getting closer and closer to that second instance where we were pushing our boundaries and our expectations of what we can do when we're doing the, those inclined dumbbell bench because I personally have pretty weak shoulders. My shoulders are my weakest muscle group because I never trained them up until about uh, two years ago. I never trained shoulders and uh, probably why I got a bunch of shoulder or pec injuries because I didn't have the shoulder musculature and things were having to get dispersed onto the pecs a little more than they should have been. So those were good and while we were benching, my left elbow. Last week, my left shoulder was a little, eh, it was throwing a, a bit of a tantrum. And then today, my left elbow, which it's a good progression that it's not still the shoulder, the shoulder still is, it, it's not still iffy. Having the uh, elbow a little grumpy, not super good, but the fact that it wasn't the elbow and the shoulder was, was good trying to find the silver linings there. So we reduced the load on those, and we also tried to increase the range of motion. I only video the first set for you guys, so you didn't see the full breadth of the range of motion extension that I did. You can see I'm kind of propped up on the incline bench a little bit more than, my, my butt's not on the seat, and I prop myself up, and you, you can see the back of my head is on the edge of the incline bench set up there, which, I mean, it's an extension of the range of motion because I'm able to push my um, uh, the, the range of motion of those dumbbells past the back of my head, but it wasn't far enough for me to get a good stretch in. So moving forward in the, 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 the two sets afterwards with these 30 pound dumbbells, we extended the range of motion even further. Sorry about that. I'm doing driving for Uber Eats right now. We extended the range of motion a little further with those and we got a better stretch. We were able to extend and get a little bit of a lat stretch going on there too, which kind of like a dumbbell pullover. So we're getting a pretty good uh, dumbbell skull crusher, incline skull crusher, as well as the uh, dumbbell pullover. So getting all those muscle fibers nice and stretched out, getting a good bit of elasticity going on there and preparing our body to be healthy going forward which is always the goal of accessories. Accessories are stretching under a load. And then we did, so the cable cross machine was taken and it sucks. So my gym is in the midst of doing some improvements. Uh, they just got a uh, jungle gym cable cross thing. Absolutely. Sorry.
Again, Uber Eats. I just got a $20 order to go to Five Guys. Normally, I don't like to accept Five Guys orders, but I mean, it's 20 bucks for eight miles. So uh, my gym just got a, uh, one of those Jungle Gym Cable Cross where it's got like eight stacks. And right now it's only got one stack, but it's got three attachments to that one stack. So if one person is using one thing, they're the only person using the entire Cable Cross machine, which I mean, it was starter equipment and my, my um, the, the owners of the gym were, were talking about it at uh, yesterday while I was doing my cardio, they were talking about, they were like, it's a little embarrassing that we have this, but it's starter equipment and we're finally taking the steps that we need to, to upgrade the equipment for our members. And like, we appreciate that. And it's super cool that they're doing that. It sucks that another gym went under, uh, the gym that I used to train at heavy metal up in Guilford, New Hampshire, uh, closed down, uh, either this month or last month. And the owner is selling off a bunch of his stuff and the gym that I'm at now is getting a bunch of the stuff. So people are like, oh, how is this? And I'm like, oh, I love that piece of equipment. It's awesome. And uh, it is. So um, we had to kind of conjugate the movement. So we had to use um, red bands and we crossed it across two different uh, power racks that were spread out a bit. I, I tried to do it in one, one um, uh, power rack but the, the I didn't get the pec stretch it was more like a, a bench like a wide grip bench rather than a pec fly and I wanted the pec fly going on there uh, because we had to superset a, a cable cross pec fly with a, uh, a close grip pulse to push up and we were able to achieve that with the the red bands it was a little weird getting the foot position right for that but we did it and then we finished off with some biceps and we got some pretty nice pumpage going on there in the pump check so i'm off doing the uber eats i'm almost at the five guys uh that is gonna give me 17 dollars for eight miles so i'm pretty happy about that the first delivery of the day my car still smells like five guys from yesterday because i had an order that was three bags large how much food do you have to order to get three large bags for 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 five guys it was atrocious my my car has smelled like five guys ever since and i'm trying to get it to not smell like five guys fries because i'm an i'm i'm a healthy boy i'll follow a nutrition plan i don't want to i don't want to be smelling five guys wherever i'm driving but it's inevitable that your car is going to smell like some of the deliveries you're doing when you're doing Uber Eats. Consider that next time that you're on your... Uber Eats is no one's plan A. It's always a plan B, plan C. So, I mean, it sucks, but it is what it is. I got bills to pay. And if you guys aren't ordering off my Printify, which I know none of you have, I can see the orders. No one's made one. Check it out. Link in the description. So... I'm off and I'll give you some unhinged chaos thoughts that just exist in my brain when I'm doing this because I get really bored and I think a lot and when I think bad things happen and you guys are going to benefit from that. Bye. We've got the bowl. The bowl. We've got... 400 grams of white cow rose rice. We got some honey mustard to, to add a little razzle dazzle. We've got some Himalayan pink salt on there to make us want to actually eat this. And we've got about 250 grams of chicken breast and a Diet Coke. Because caffeine free Diet Coke is anabolic. Facts. I just delivered to a neighborhood where I think. A million dollar house would be the the cheap house on the block like these house six car garages houses so large they go into an L shape because they're towing the property lines like I just, I just want a piece of land that I can let my dog run free on and like a tiny little shack so much house there are so much house there and it's like the more house you have the more house you have to clean I want a little space, a little space for little old me and little old buddy. That's all I want. But also consider guys who have shaved heads. Um, they probably don't have the biggest benches because 
guys with big benches can't reach their entire head and they probably can't shave it very well unless unless they have someone doing it for them but let's be honest I, I, I couldn't I couldn't shave my head every day I, it, I just couldn't do it because I couldn't reach and because I can't help I, I can't ask someone to help me out with that because that's weird I I get weirded out by other people's hair it's it's weird to me also I didn't know that Asian tour buses were a real thing I thought that was just a movie trope learn something new every day so just finished another graveyard shift basically it's almost one in the morning and uh we did just under 20 bucks an hour which i mean that's pretty good all things considered it's a it's it's a thursday night and it's slow but we've got our last meal to eat for the day um the way that i'm going about things is is in the morning i have to drive someone at like 6 45 in the morning and uh I, I did a lot of research back in high school on polyphasic sleep cycles. So I'm kind of implementing a biphasic sleep cycle, which means that I go to sleep when, when I go to sleep. Uh, and uh, I sleep for however long. And then I wake up, bring them to do whatever. And then I go right back to sleep for the rest of the eight hours that I need. Um, and it worked, it worked pretty well this morning. I, w it, it's pretty much just not fighting the, the, just being like, ah, I need to get all eight, like stressing out about, I need eight hours right now. Um, and it's, it's uh, not fighting that and kind of just accepting it and going with the flow of, of what I need to do in order to perform at my peak potential is almost freeing uh stress wise because i'm not stressed out about sleeping because i'm just like yeah i'll just make up for it i pretty much from seven to three i uh, is pretty much a black hole of time to me because i have to pick them up after work um so that being said i uh the worst case scenario is i get home and i pick them up from where they have to be from and drive them to work and then go home sleep eight hours and then pick them up from work and then that's where my day starts that's a worst case scenario i wouldn't like to do that but if it comes to that i'm already doing biphasic sleep if it comes to that then whatever but we've got two meals left we've got our, our beef and guacamole meal and um and then we've got a uh, protein shake and um bagels i'd rather do something else for the carbs for, from the bagels because it's it's a it's supposed to be a purely protein shake and then carb heavy heavy meal so i'll see if i can't find anything out and about that i can use in in place of those carbs because i i don't bagels are kind of hard to eat because they're just so dry or not dry but like they kind of take a while and they're they're it's they're tasty but they take like it's there's a lot of chewing going on and if there's something that i can eat because i'm just really really exhausted right now and the the thought of having to eat two bagels they soak up a lot of liquid and they hold on to it so it makes it a little harder to get them down so um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna see if i can't avoid eating bagels but if i have to eat bagels i'll have to eat bagels but i'll see you with my next meal. all right boys we've got the bowl it's got 220 grams of 93.7 beef 412 and a half grams of cow rose white rice some Himalayan pink salt for a little razzle dazzle and 75 grams of guac it's supposed to be 70 grams but I only had 75 grams and I wasn't gonna let five grams go to waste and also I gave buddy a bone and he is very happy about it
he's being a happy little guy. So I didn't find any of the damn the rice. I really like you rice. I hope that's not racist. Um <clears throat> I didn't find anything to replace my carbs with, but I'm gonna assume that two cups of coffee that were that I consumed today that weren't on program are gonna cover those calories for the day. That is a justification no one should be doing. But I'm just so tired. It's after 1 a.m. Uh, and I got... Oh. I'm even going to edit this video in the morning. Whew. Oh, cowabunga, my dudes. Like, comment, subscribe. See you later.